Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, um, I am going to be um, talking about MOSFET regulators. Now this is the FH020AA MOSFET regulator. Uh, this one was removed from a Yamaha MT-09. Um, this is the genuine article. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a little bit of a chat um, about the MOSFET regulator and what you're looking for when you're buying one. Um, and also, I am going to be creating the loom um, to fit this to my VFR 800. So, welcome back to the channel. Don't forget to uh, like, subscribe and comment. And uh, let's have a look at what we're going to be doing. Okay, so Shinjin MOSFET regulators. Now, these are um, not cheap to buy. Um, you can get them fairly reasonably priced if you shop around. Um, look for uh, MT09s breaking. There are other models that use these regulators. Um, I can't think of them off the top of my head. However, I will um, do a little bit of research and I will add that into the description below. Um, now, um, it's worth bearing in mind that on eBay, um, there are sellers out there calling the uh, regulators that they sell replacements for these. Now, replacements are not the same as genuine Shindigen regulators. What that basically means is that the replacement will plug in because it's got the right connectors, but it does not mean that it's a genuine MOSFET regulator. It's probably old tech, uh, like, you know, the kind of thing that you'd see in the 60s and 70s, um, and it's not a genuine MOSFET. So it's worth bearing that in mind. MOSFETs, you can see these markings on the end, the uh, FH020AA. Also, on the heatsink itself, you can see these, these dimples. There's eight of them, and they're in the specific positions on the heatsink. There's one round, um, one round mounting hole and one that's slotted. And another big one underneath is the base is made of stainless steel. Um, a lot of the uh, the copied um, non-genuine regulators out there will um, not have the stainless steel base uh, and the connections are as you would expect. Okay, so that's what you're looking out for. Um, if, you're, if you're looking to buy a genuine brand new replacement one and it's like 40 pounds, then it's not a Shindigen regulator because genuine brand new Shindigen regulators are a lot of money. I was quite lucky with this one. I bought this quite a while ago, um, and this is the first opportunity I've had to actually get around to making the video. But this one, I think I paid about, round about £50 for, um, and that was the shipped price, um, from a motorcycle breaker. That was breaking an MT-09. Um, so that's probably a good, uh, a good place to look. Okay, in addition to that, let's put that to one side. In addition to that, what I've got is... A wiring kit now this is the correct these are the correct um, plugs for the regulator along with the terminals um, and these uh, I got from Kodje Cat um, which is a website that deals in um, automotive and motorcycle um, you know wiring connectors uh, what I'll do is I'll leave a link to uh, these connectors in the description below so that you can uh, you can find find them easily enough now, um, what I've got here is a self-resetting circuit breaker. Now, the reason why I've got a self-resetting self circuit breaker is because obviously, in the long term, should I fit a regular fuse and it blows, I'd have to replace it. With a self-resetting one, you don't need to replace it. It will reset itself. Um, you know, the it goes without saying. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this self-resetting circuit, uh, circuit breaker. These are available on eBay. I think they're about six or seven pounds. Um, again, I will leave a link to it in the description. But obviously, being an eBay link, don't be surprised if the link doesn't work after a certain amount of time because uh, obviously we know that they do change uh, from time to time. Now, um, cabling. What I've got here is I've got silicon cable. This is 12AWG. 
and this is for the stator cables. Um, I think, I can't remember how much, what length I bought here, but I bought more than enough um, to do the job. Yeah, as I said, 12 AWG is perfectly adequate for stators. And here I have uh, 10 AWG, and these are for the battery cables. Now I bought, uh, I think I bought two meters of each um, here, which is again, more than I'm gonna require. Uh, but yeah, 10 AWG, so it's slightly thicker for the battery cables. Um, and it's good quality silicon cable, so it's nice and flexible, uh, high quality cabling. Uh, again, what I'll do is I will leave a link in the description uh, below for the cabling so that you can find it easier. Something else I've got uh, is a piece of uh, plate aluminium. Now, this is, uh, I think it's five mil thick. Uh, and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make a mounting plate to mount it to the bike because obviously um, being a, a non-standard Honda item this will not bolt straight up to the bike the holes will be in a different place so what I'm going to do is make an adapter plate but because I made it out of aluminium or because it's sorry going to be made out of aluminium should I say um, this will act as a really, really good heat sink, taking the heat from the regulator into the frame and thereby dispersing it over a wide um, surface area. Um, that will be done in a different video. Um, so please uh, like, subscribe and comment for that video. Um, and then, uh, yeah, um, the, the last video in the series will should be then uh, me fitting it to the bike. So this will be a series of three videos, one where I'm going to make the loom, which is this video, one where I make the, uh, the mounting plate, and then the last video should be me fitting it to the bike. Um, yeah, all good. Okay, so let's, um, let's get the cable out, get the connectors out, and set about creating the loom. Okay, so before we begin, I just want to stress that I am not a professional vehicle electrician. Um, so uh, what I, the way that I may do this may not be 100% the correct way, but um, it's the way that I do it. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we are going to wire up the connectors for the, uh, for the regulator rectifier. Okay, so there's one grey, one black. The grey one is for the stator. And the black one is for the battery connections. Okay, so there's three cables that go from the stator because it's a three phase uh, circuit. And there's two that go to the battery. So one's negative and one's positive. And um, the positive is the inside connector. Okay, and the outside connector is the negative. Now, those have to be the correct way around. Um, if you get them the wrong way around, you will damage the rectifier. The three that go to the stator, it really does not matter which way around they go. Uh, it does not matter at the um, stator end. So uh, yeah, you can, you can wire these three up any way you want to, but you must get these two the right way around. Positive, negative. Okay, so let's take our connections, open them up and get our little connectors out of the box too. Okay, we don't need those ones for the moment. Okay, <clears throat> these connectors, as you can see, fit neatly on, and they are slightly different. Okay, that one won't fit that connector, so you need to make sure you buy a connector for that side and a connector for that side. They are different, the keys are different. Okay, so um, first thing we need to do, let's put the regulator to one side. First thing we need to do is have a look at the connector itself. This in the center pops out, which allows you to uh, fit and remove the, uh, allows you to fit and remove the connections into the into the socket and prevents them being pulled out by accident. Now the connectors themselves pretty sturdy, and you've got the three little grommets. Now for the cable, what we need to do is strip the end 
it's pretty pretty thick cable what we'll do we'll strip the end give it a little twist and that should be enough now that is how it's going to be into the connector what I'm going to do is I'm going to tin the end of the cable though we're going to crimp this part of the connector around the cable and then that part of the connector will crimp onto the insulation okay so let me tin this wire up let's get the uh, get the soldering iron nice and hot and begin by tinning all three wires okay then so got a bit of flux on the end of the cable let's Let's just tin the cable. And there we are, that's nice and nicely tinned keeping all the strands together. There we go. Next, what we need to do is just fit the cable into the connector. Now what I need to do is get my uh, get my crimps out and just crimp the end of that connector over the cable. Okay, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm only going to crimp this part of the connector for now because what I'm going to do is add a little bit of solder to the connector just to make sure we've got very good conductivity, excellent uh, continuity and that there's very very little resistance. Um, obviously um, what I don't want to do is crimp this part yet because if I do then the heat will transfer and just melt the insulation so I'm going to just crimp this part first just like so as you can see that's a nice good crimp now what I'm going to do, in addition to that, is just get a bit of flux on the connector, a bit of flux there, a bit of flux there, I'm going to add a bit of solder, let's get a bit of heat in there. Good amount of solder into the connector. Get a good amount of solder in the connector, just like so. And that should be a very good connection. Now what we'll do is we will just crimp up the rest of the connector oops so i'm just going to nip that together ever so slightly And there we have it. That is the first connection made for the stator. Right, what we need to do next is the other two in exactly the same way. 
and we should be laughing. So what I'll do, I'll do the other two, and then I'll bring it back in, and we'll look at fitting them into the into the uh, into the connector itself. Okay then. So that is all three, all three connectors soldered onto the end of the uh, the yellow cables for the stator. Now, what we need to do next is fit the little fit the little grommets over the cables. Um, obviously, you could do this before, but I didn't um, get them on the other end of the cable and push it all the way, all the way along to the other end of the connector. It probably would be easier to do this. Uh, as it happens, I forgot, but um, luckily I have the, uh, the luxury of it on the other end it just means that I've got quite a way to go because my cables are quite long. Get it all the way to the tent to the end. On the next step, we'll have to uh, remember to do this first, however, because we're going to be putting connectors on the other end as well. So there we go. Right, they need to be up. Like that, before we uh, before we fit them into the connector. Okay, then. So the middle bit here can be completely removed. That doesn't need to. Oh, yeah, you're not coming out. Come on. There, you come. there we go. Right. That doesn't need to be in there. Okay, then. Looking at the connector itself, you've got the solid side, and then. The underside just got like a little cut out and some little tangs. Hopefully you can make that out. What they, uh, what we need to do is the tangs need to go down. So with the connector, in the connector like so. Okay, so what I would recommend you do is just with a little bit of spit, just moisten the little grommets because it makes them easier to go in. Uh, cut outside downwards. And what you need to do, oops, cut outside downwards, is just put the connector in until it clicks. Get a little click. And then push the grommet in. The saliva does help to get it in. And then you can use a little screwdriver just to give it a push into the connector just like so yeah the saliva just makes it a little bit slippery so it just makes it go slide into the connector easier so there you go, as you can see, we're, uh, we're fitting in properly. Now, should you for any reason need to um, remove the, uh, the connector from this connector block, just inside there, there is a little tiny tang and that tang engages with the slot in the bottom of the connector. That, that tang engages with this, with this slot. So if you do need to remove the connector from this block for any reason, just with a small screwdriver, just press down on that tang and it will pull out the connector. Okay, just, you know, if you made a mistake or particularly on the other one where you've got the negative and the positive, make sure they go the right way around. Um, but uh, yeah, if you do need to remove them, that's, uh, that's what we need to do. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit the other two into this connector exactly the same way. Um, and then uh, I'll bring you back Right then, okay, so that's all three cables now fitted into the connector. As you can see, looking pretty tidy. Uh, and there's the three connectors. Last thing we need to do is refit this. Now what this does is it locks uh, the whole thing together and prevents access to those little tangs that I was talking about a second ago. Just push it in all the way. And there we go, and now that is the state of wiring complete? Now what I've done is I've left an absolute load 
of cable. Far more than I need. Um, I'm not going to put any, do anything with these uh, this end at the moment because what we're going to do is when it comes to fitting to the motorcycle, I'm going to hardwire these to the stator cables. Um, removing the uh, connector block that's currently on the bike will have the added bonus of taking an area of resistance out of the circuit. Um, Hardwiring them is the way to go. Now, um, obviously that will be, uh, you know, that will be covered in the future video where I'm actually fitting the MOSFET regulator to the bike. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll visit that later on. Okay, so that's the, uh, that is the connector for the stator done. And as you can see, she fits on nice and snug. Beautiful, right. So that's that part done. What we'll do next is the uh, the battery cabling, um, which is uh, yeah only two cables. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll we'll look at that next. Okay then. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to do the connector for the battery side. Now, as I stated before, the um, the positive cable goes to the inside connector on the MOSFET. Uh, regulator and the negative goes on the outside. There is no middle connector. So what we'll do um, when we come to uh, fitting it to the bike, let's open up this little packet. Get all the uh, gubbins out. Now, um, what we don't get in this kit is a blank. They're all designed to take cables. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to fill this with um, basically a pot it with silicon um, just to keep any um, moisture out. Uh, probably won't cause too much of a drama. Um, however, just you know, I want to go belt and braces on it. I'm going to I'm going to fill the middle one with uh, with silicon just to just to keep any water out. Um, but otherwise, uh, the installation for this is pretty much identical to the stator, just with. Uh, uh, different cable, different color cables effectively. It's a different gauge as well, it's thicker. Um, um, but on the positive side, we will be fitting this little chap. So obviously there's some uh, different connectors that need to go in there, but we'll um, we'll get on with that first. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the, uh, the uh, end for the reg rec. And then what I'll do, once I've done these two, you don't need to see this again, because obviously you've seen, seen me do it with the stator cables. It's, it's pretty much the same deal. Uh, once we've uh, done this bit, then um, we'll, I'll bring it back in and we'll, uh, we'll have a look at the circuit breaker. Okay, so there we go. We've got both connectors complete. Um, Looking pretty good. As I said, I'm no expert at this, but I think I've managed to uh, achieve a pretty, you know, a pretty decent uh, tidy install on that. Um, the only thing I would say, because I've used 10 gauge wire for the battery terminals, sorry, the battery connector, should I say, is that the grommets were a little bit harder to get in, but they, you know, I got there in the end. They're uh, they're in there. Um, and as I said earlier, I'm going to put a little bit of potting, um, you know, just a little bit of silicon in the middle hole just to uh, waterproof the connector. Um, obviously, I won't bore you with that, but I'll uh, I'll do that prior to installation on the motorcycle. Okay, so um, again, as I said earlier, red one goes to the inside connector. And there we go. That looks rather nice. I think you'll agree. Okay, so that is the regulator end. Um, obviously, I've got masses of cable here. What I need to do now is um, I need to install my self-setting circuit breaker. So that's going to go on the on the positive battery line a little bit further down. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to leave the stator cables nice and long because um, obviously you don't want to cut them too short and I'm not going to know 100% how long I need them until it comes to installing the regulator onto the motorcycle. So I will um, leave them uh, at their massive length as they are for now. Um, however, I do know that I only need between around about two and a half to three feet of battery cable. So what I'll do, I'm going to cut it to three feet and then um, I'll... Um, Look at uh, look at you know look at fitting the uh, the self-setting circuit breaker. So let's um, 
Let's get the, uh, let's take this connector off. Put the regulator to one side. Let's get to around about three feet, which is right there. That's going to be plenty long enough. Okay, and I've still got, I bought quite a bit, so I've still got more than three feet left. So if anybody wants it, it's yours. Just leave a comment and I'll happily uh, send it to you. If you want to just pay the shipping, it's yours, absolutely free. Okay then, now this is going to go into the, the positive line. Now, uh, hopefully you can make that out on the camera. Here we have aux and bat. So it needs to go that way around. Connector end to aux. And obviously where it says bat goes towards the battery. So what I want to do, I want to put it around about, let's put it around about, six inches away from the battery. So it'll be effectively like that. So what we need to do is put some connectors on here. Right then. Okay, what I've got is I've selected some terminals um, which will fit neatly onto here. Remove the nuts. The little, uh, the little star washer is captive on this. As I said before, I will add a link below to uh, to this circuit breaker so that you can uh, find one quite easily yourself. What I'll do is uh, quickly tin these cables up. Again, you don't need to see me, uh, you won't be interested in seeing me turning the cables. I've already done it once. So I will bring it back in once I've got them tinned and ready to add the connectors. Okay then, so I've got all four ends tinned. Um, what I do need to do is pop a bit of heat shrink over the top of each. Um, I'm going to need four pieces all together, so I'll cut four now. Okay. And obviously remembering to pop it over the cable before fitting the connector on. That one can go to one side for the moment, along with those two pieces of heat shrink. Okay then, so what we're going to do is crimp a connector in place. That's a really nice, good, solid crimp. And what we'll do is exactly the same on this end. Give it a little tug, yeah, that's solid. What I'm going to try and do though, is I'm going to try and just get a little bit of solder just in that little gap there and that gap there, just to, just as a kind of a belt and braces, 
just belt and braces just to be certain a bit of get a bit of flux in there hopefully that'll help it get it in that little get it in that little hole That's the two connectors nicely on there. Hopefully that should do the trick. Okay then, so what we need to do next is just heat shrink this up. Now I've got the uh, luxury of a heat gun. You don't need a heat gun, you can use a cigarette lighter or anything like that for this. It'll work just as well. Exactly the same on this one. Both the connectors ready to uh, to go on to the uh, circuit breaker. Now, what I've done stupidly there is I've actually accidentally heated up the heat shrink. On uh, on the negative as well. So what I'll do is I'll cut that off and add another piece. Bit silly. Obviously, I was a bit close to it. Um, okay, so. What I need to do next is fit a terminal onto the end of here for the uh, for the battery. Now this is a slightly larger terminal because the battery connections are bigger. So let's pop that one on there. tight yeah that feels beautiful all right and again like before I'm just going to pop a little bit of solder just in that hole in the end just to belt and braces as I said before
Beautiful, that looks nice. And then yet again, get the heat shrink. Beautiful. Now, obviously, what I need on the other end of this one is exactly the same terminal as that. So I'll get that on there now, and then I'll bring you back, and we'll uh, we'll wire up the uh, circuit breaker. Right then. So as you can see, negative t uh, terminal fitted. All the terminals fitted to the uh, the positive line. All that remains for us to do now is to uh, fit it onto the. Uh, the uh, circuit breaker itself. Now, um, on here, there's uh, no gaps for the cables to come through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some with my knife. I don't know if you can see there, there's some little lines just inside, the, just inside that lid there. Um, I'm just gonna chop through those on both sides. And that will allow for the cables to pass through. Just like so. And the same on the other side. Just like that. Right there. Now, this needs to be fitted uh, onto the housing itself. And once the cables are on, the cables will hold it in place. So let's get the first one on. Remembering, of course, to uh, get the polarity correct. The, on, the, uh, on these, it's the gold the gold copper colored post that uh, goes towards the battery, but it does say on there. Um, I'm pretty sure some of them actually say negative and minus, um, so, but it, you know, you get the idea. And the same here, get that one through the gap. There we go. Now, all that remains for this is just to tighten both of those down, uh, good and tight, uh, just a 10 mil, uh, 10 mil nut. But yeah, get them uh, good and tight, and then um, you're good to go. So that, guys, is the uh, the job basically complete, and we're uh, we're good to go. And hopefully, we should have plenty of years of trouble-free VFR goodness. Okay, now, pretty straightforward. As I said, I'm not an electrician uh, in any sense of the word. However, I didn't find that to be a particularly um, challenging job. Um, you know, it's uh, pretty straightforward. There's the, there's the cable, all good to go. I mean, I suppose you could put some sheathing around it if you want to keep it all together, uh, entirely up to you. Um, I may do that. I think I've got some knocking around somewhere that uh, I could uh, that I could use. Um, but yeah, hopefully you found this uh, this video very informative and helpful. Uh, please leave me a comment in the uh, in the comment section, guys, and I will endeavour to uh, to reply. If you if you need any help or anything with this, then uh, again, um, just ask, and I'll uh, I'll do what I can to help. What I'll do, I'll leave links to all the cable, all the connectors, the uh, and all that good stuff. In the uh, in the description, so that you can uh, you can find it really really easily. Um, what I said uh, earlier was that I've got plenty of this left over. In fact, I've got um, uh, three three foot sections. So, if you would like me to send you some, 
I will more than uh, be more than happy to do so. Um, just pay the shipping, um, and I will uh, I will send it out to you. UK addresses only, though, guys. I'm not uh, I'm not doing international shipping. Um, as much as I'd like to, you know, it, it gets a bit daft. By the time I've done international shipping, you may as well have just bought it yourself. But I'm happy to donate this to somebody who wants to do this job. Um, yeah, just pay, just pay the shipping and uh, drop me a line, and um, I'll, I will sort it out. I've got enough for three people, so yeah, by all means, give me a, give me a holler. Anyway, thank you very much for uh, for coming by, and um, I hope to see you all for the next video where I will be creating my uh, my mountain plate see you all very very soon thank you very much guys bye bye now